go over the laparoscopy instruments set or the instruments that we use in a lot of endoscopy cases. They are referred to as minimally invasive surgery when we're talking about endoscopic cases, which means that the procedures are going to be performed through several small incisions using a video assistant versus a large traditional abdominal incision. So think of small little puncture marks to do the exact same thing that we used to do in larger cases. When we do these laparoscopic cases, we are making small incisions through the abdomen and we're placing plastic trocars through those incisions that become ports for our instruments. Then we can place our instruments, our camera, and everything through it. But before we can get to the case, we really have to understand the instrumentation that we're using. So let's get on to learning these laparoscopic instruments. Now, the first thing, the first time you ever get into a laparoscopic case and you notice that the camera is starting to get foggy just because of the CO2 getting pressed up against the camera, the doctor will sometimes use this first thing called an anti-fog. We place this on our field. Our surgeon will have the green sponge close to the camera on the field and we use the Fred solution. We actually will sprinkle it, sprinkle it, we'll pour small drops onto our actual Fred to provide an anti-fog for our surgeon. The biggest thing that you have to remember is that this is a countable item. So it is a part of your count. Other places have what's called a lens warmer. Not all places have it, but that's exactly what it does. It keeps your scope warm. It's a lens warmer. So in these particular laparoscopic cases, sometimes we want to kind of do a blunt dissection. So the next instrument that we're going to talk about is your endo kitner. It's just like a peanut that you're going to learn in your open cases, but it is really the peanut on a longer tube so that it can fit down the trocar and help with blunt dissection. In order to get into the abdomen, however, you're going to connect this insufflation tubing to the CO2 connected to the trocar that we're going to learn a little bit later and inflate the belly to give the surgeon visualization. We have instruments that act just like a bovi that we use inside of the belly or an ESU. The one that you're going to learn is a ligature and we do have a ligature in the lab that you'll be able to get your hands on and really see how it works. But it does the same thing as a regular ESU. It cuts and coagulates but it's made in a way that it can go through the trocar. Now, a lot of the rest of these instruments that we use will have a port or an area for a uh, monopolar or bipolar to hook onto the end. So with the L hook, it's shaped just like an L and it allows to really cut the lines or margins in different organs inside the body. We also have a J hook that can do the same thing. It's just the angle of the instrument is going to be different. Instead of that L, you're looking at a J. We're gonna get more onto this next particular instrument once you get in the lab, but just know that we have an endo harmonic scalpel. We have a regular harmonic scalpel as well, but this one is for endoscopic surgeries. So we have this when those surgeons want to use something a little bit more um, specialized for their particular procedure, you'll find it on the surgeon's preference card whether they're going to have it available. We don't necessarily open this one because it's expensive, but we will have it available for the surgeon. When we talk about removing different body parts from the case in, in laparoscopic or endoscopic procedure, we'll use what's called an endo catch. We hand it to the surgeon closed. The surgeon will place it into the body through the trocar, 
closed and deploy it, meaning opening up the bag and placing the gallbladder, the appendix, whatever thing that we're removing into the endo catch because it's catching the specimen endoscopically and then we'll pull it out through the trocar. Your varus needle. We use the varus needle in many cases to even get access to the peritoneum. The varus needle will go into the body and a lot of times they'll hook up the insufflation tube strictly straight to the varus needle if that's the way they're going to do it. Following with a trocar and then switching everything out. But just know that you're gonna need that varus needle. That's gonna be one of the first things that you're gonna have on your back table or on your mayo stand, sorry. Now the next couple instruments are just like we use in regular. So we'll go by pretty fast. Uh, meaning that they look exactly and are functioning exactly like our open instruments except they're endoscopic. So we have an endoscopic right angle forcep and if you notice it looks exactly like a regular right angle. We have a blunt dissector used for cutting and dissecting and it's one that's just blunt. They'll ask for a blunt instrument. We have our dolphin nose dissector if you look at the nose of this cutting and dissecting instrument, it is shaped like the nose of a dolphin. Now, our workhorse. When we're talking about endoscopic cases, this is the instrument that we tend to go to a lot. It's called our Maryland dissector. We use it for cutting and dissecting, but we're also using it for grabbing different, different organs as well. This is our workhorse. This is the instrument that if you don't know anything else, grab that mailing and get it on your mayo stand. Scissors. The only difference is they're endoscopic. So we have regular endoscopic scissors. They are used for cutting and dissecting. We have endoscopic hook scissors. And you'll be able to tell because of the ends of the endoscopic hook scissors. Surgeon's preference. Some of them prefer to use it based on what they're doing but you'll know once you get into those cases with those particular surgeons. We may have to take a biopsy. So you have another cutting and dissecting instrument called the endoscopic bicep biopsy forceps. I almost said biceps, but endoscopic biopsy forceps. As opposed to the punch, the endoscopic biopsy punch is going to kind of grab onto the specimen and grab it out versus the previous one we just spoke with, which is going to do more of a pulling motion. So you have your endoscopic biopsy punch. Now, in order to get into the abdomen or the peritoneum, we talk about trocars. So there are a couple different trocars the surgeons can use or are at their disposal depending on their facility. We have our Versa port trocars. We have Alice forceps going back to an instrument that looks like ones we use in the real world, real world, in the open cases, endoscopic Alice forceps. They're Alice, just used endoscopically. Endoscopic Babcock forceps. They're Babcocks, just endoscopic. Another blunt grasper, so there's going to be a couple blunt graspers that you use. You just ask the surgeon which one they want. The claw grasper is going to be a lot harder, um, thicker, and bigger. So it's usually a 10 millimeter. Um, they call it the big one, the big uh, jaws of life. I've had a surgeon call them. And when they are ready to pull out the specimen, and let's say that you can't get into the endo catch, they'll grab these to hook onto the organ, gallbladder, appendix, and pull it out with those. And those are called your, your claw graspers, grasping and holding. You have your hunter bow grasper. When you get into a lot of those bow cap cases, this is the ones you're going to usually use. They usually call them flat, your flat instruments or your flat grasper, but it's for grasping and holding. For here, just make sure you know that it's your hunter bow grasper. Getting back to trocars, these are the ones you'll tend to see. These are probing and dilating. So when you look at the Excel trocars, they come in different sizes. 5 and 10 are the ones we usually have. We are getting ready to go over the laparoscopic cholecystectomy where we're going to have two 12s and two 5s. But once you guys get into the 
operating room and we're doing that particular case, just keep in mind, you know, we have different size trocars for different things that we're using. So, XL trocar. Some doctors like to use the Versa Step trocars because it works easier for them and a lot of times it's going to be where they trained at. With the Versa Step, just know that it's a step. You don't just give them one, they'll be um, progressing to the different size of the different troll cars. So your Versa Step, they're still for probing, and these are really dissecting as well. And then you have surgeons that just like to have the blunt troll car, probing and dilating. But all of these troll cars are going to allow for access of the instrumentation to be able to use in the endoscopic procedures. We still so have those surgeons that will make a smaller incision and need retraction before they can put in that camera uh, trocar. So they'll use a S retractor. And we have to irrigate, in some cases, the abdomen. And we can't just use the bulbs, bulb or the aseptal because it's not going to fit. So we'll use what's called a suction irrigator. It irrigates and suction and you'll notice that there's a red and blue button on top. The blue button is to release the water. The red button is to suck the fluid out of the abdomen. So we use the suction irrigator. We have an endoscopic aspirating needle and that's just that. Let's say they want to aspirate fluid that's in the body to send off for a specimen. They will grab that endoscopic aspirating needle. In a lot of cases, especially in the bariatrics, um, we will suture. Yes, that's right. We will suture endoscopically. So you'll need a needle driver. The needle driver that is most often used in these laparoscopic instrument sets is the Apple needle holder. If you notice, it looks just like a regular needle holder, except it is used for the laparoscopic or endoscopic cases through the trocar. We have a knot pusher. A lot of times we'll tie the, the surgeon will tie the knot and they need it to get as close to the stitch as possible once they've thrown it. So they'll use the knot pusher. Once the knot is tied, they'll push the knot down through the troll car and tighten it up. If there is a bleeder and you want to clip the bleeder, you'll use the next instrument, which is your endoscopic clip applier, also known as your endo clip applier. This is used for suturing and stapling. A lot of times you want to include a vessel, you'll have it, give it to them, and they'll usually do two to cut, but it's also going to be on the surgeon's preference and how they were trained. We also have tons of different staplers, just like we do in our regular open cases. We have our GIA stapler, which is used for suturing and stapling. <clears throat> now, we talked a lot about the instruments, but how can we see? Well, we have an endoscopic camera that is used for viewing, which comes or will have to be popped up maybe separately or they come usually together. We have a either a regular light cord or a fiber optic light cord. These are accessory instruments for the endoscopic procedures. So we've got our camera, we've got our light cord, but we have to have a scope in order to see. So the first one you'll see is a 10 millimeter, zero, to, zero to degree endoscope. And what they're talking about is the 10 millimeter is the thickness of the scope and the zero degree is the way in which the um, operator can see inside the body. I bring that up because you have your 10 millimeter, 30 degree scope as well. And you'll notice because it looks like there's a 30 degree slope at the end of the scope. So with the tens, we have a five, five millimeter zero and an endo eye. Not every facility will have an endo eye, but you'll know because it's a lot smaller and it's almost like it comes in its own little smaller compartment. All right. Those are the instruments for the laparoscopic cases. It's really a part of our laparoscopic instrument set. We may not have all of the instruments from what you would normally see in a laparoscopic instrument set, but I still want you to at least be familiar with the bulk 
of what surgeons will use. Okay, keep to studying.